This video is brought to you by Ground News. It's now been a year since Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. In that time, he's cut 80% of Twitter's workforce, ditched the famous blue tick for a controversial new subscription service, and renamed it X. Unfortunately for Musk, despite reducing X's operating costs by something like 70%, he's still in the red, and last week Bloomberg reported that the company had been internally valued at less than half what Musk paid for it. So in this video we're going to have a look at Musk's plan for X, what's going wrong, and whether it can be saved. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by just looking at the numbers. Now, while reliable numbers are hard to come by because X is now a private company, so it doesn't have to disclose quarterly data, traffic estimates from similar web, downloads of the X app are down something like 40% in the last year, while user churn, i.e. the number of users who stopped using the app, is up by more than 30%. While Musk himself has claimed that monthly users are up to all-time highs, similar web estimates suggest that both monthly active users and aggregate traffic, i.e. the number of site visits, are down by about 20 and 15% respectively. Again, while Musk would probably dispute these figures or attribute them to bots, CEO Linda Yaccarino seemed to admit that daily users were down about 10% in an interview last month. Falling, or at least stagnant, user numbers and the platform's controversial politics, including Musk's strong position on free speech, have pushed advertisers away from X, and Musk himself admitted in September that the company's US ad revenues are down something like 60%. While some brands have returned to the platform since, especially after Musk appointed Linda Yaccarino as CEO, estimates suggest that X's ad business will take in just $2.9 billion this year, down from roughly $4.1 billion in 2022 and $4.5 billion in 2021. This is particularly bad news for X, because in 2022, advertising accounted for something like 85% of all revenue, and a report from the New York Times earlier this year claimed that X was becoming increasingly reliant on ad revenue from industries it had previously shied away from or prohibited, including online gambling, marijuana accessories and erectile dysfunction products. In one week in May, four of Twitter's top 10 US advertisers were online gambling and fantasy sports betting companies, according to an internal presentation obtained by The Times. Musk has tried to find new revenue streams by charging new users in some countries $1 a year to use the platform, and introduced a tiered subscription service called X Premium, with algorithmically boosted subscriber tweets costing between $3 and $16 a month. But so far, these have had little impact. In the first quarter of 2023, X generated just $11 million via subscriptions, accounting for a bit over 1% of revenue. Lower than expected subscription revenue and annual interest payments of about $1.5 billion incurred during Musk's deal mean that X is still making a loss, much to Musk's irritation. In March, Musk claimed that X would be cash flow positive by mid-2023, but then admitted in a tweet in July that things hadn't quite gone to plan. In August, CEO Linda Yaccarino claimed that X was pretty close to break-even, but six weeks later admitted the company wouldn't turn a profit until early 2024 at the earliest. There was more bad news earlier in the week when Bloomberg revealed that Musk himself had valued the company at just $19 billion during a restricted stock issuance to employees, a far cry from the $44 billion he paid for it and down from the $20 billion mentioned in internal emails in March. Now, that's not to say all is lost. Those people that still use X spend about as long on the app as they did before Musk took over, with the average time spent on the app staying basically flat in the third quarter of 2023. It's also worth saying that, while no one values X at anywhere near the $44 billion Musk originally paid for it, one of Musk's investors valued it at $15 billion in June, which implies that X has at least got more valuable in the last few months. If nothing else, it's been a boom for Musk's personal brand, with visits to his X profile up about 100% year on year. 
It's also worth saying that, to his credit, Musk has done an impressive job, bringing down operating costs. Non-debt expenditures, i.e. spending excluding interest payments, is down from a projected $4.5 billion in 2023 to just $1.5 billion, thanks to cuts to workforce, cloud services and data storage. Nonetheless, the TLDR is that, despite significant cuts, X is still losing money. So on to the final part of this video. How does Musk plan to turn these things around? Well, obviously no one apart from Musk really knows, but he's made it clear that his long-term plan is to turn X into what he describes as the everything app. The prototype here seems to be the Chinese app WeChat, which is so all-encompassing it's almost hard to describe. WeChat is simultaneously a social media app, an internet browser, a payment processor and a personal finance manager, all rolled into one app. A big part of WeChat's success can be attributed to the fact that it was released way back in 2011, when much of China lacked a functioning digital infrastructure. WeChat essentially allowed much of China to skip to the intermediate phase of credit cards, home broadband and desktop computers, and just do it all via phone. Musk fleshed this out a bit during his meeting with X employees earlier this week, when he said that he imagined X eventually competing with not just other social media platforms, but replacing YouTube, LinkedIn, FaceTime, dating apps, and even traditional banks. The first step on this journey seems to be the introduction of digital payments, and Musk has reportedly already secured money transmitter licenses in several US states. Nonetheless, there are reasons to be skeptical of Musk's grand plan. The market WeChat conquered is very different to the one facing X, and WeChat benefited from indirect state sponsorship from Beijing, which X is unlikely to enjoy from Washington. Ultimately, X is a long way from becoming the everything app, and it's an open question as to whether a WeChat-style app could even work in America. However, in the nearer term, X's main challenge will be to fend off its direct competitors from Blue Sky, Mastodon, and Instagram threads. These Twitter emulates have tried to capitalise on the chaos going on at X, and while none of them have a large user base, the gap between Instagram threads and X is closing. If X loses its monopoly on the Twitter model, it'll be interesting to see how much Musk can rock the boat without sinking it. A recent interview of Elon Musk by Rishi Sunak at the AI Safety Summit in London has been extensively covered by 32 sources. 21% of the reporting is coming from the left, and 42% is coming from the right. If you compare the headlines, you'll start to see some interesting framing emerge. On the left, you have one outlet claiming that AI is the most disruptive force in history, and on the right, you have another highlighting that time when no jobs are needed is coming. This is all possible thanks to our sponsor Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. I especially like the blind spot feed, which highlights stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. And this is where information like the factuality score or ownership information becomes so important. Because sometimes there's a reason that only one side of the political spectrum is reporting on a story. But at the end of the day, isn't it important to see stories like this, even if we might disagree with them? I know I've personally benefited enormously from ground news. I've gotten much better at spotting political bias, and I've surprisingly challenged some of my own views. I highly encourage all of our viewers to give ground news a try. In fact, we're offering 30% off their Vantage plan to all viewers. That's under $6 a month for unlimited access to every incredible ground news feature. This offer is only available here, so make sure you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.